Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to go over the three most common configurations when installing the EG4 Grid Boss Microgrid Interconnect device to your electrical service, how to prevent causing a potentially dangerous situation by not properly grounding and bonding your system. Let's get into it. So there's kind of three main configurations that you're going to run into when installing the EG4 Grid Boss on your electrical service. And we're going to go over those three options right now and uh, the grounding and bonding that goes along with it. This is one uh, kind of electrical issue that a lot of people overlook or don't fully understand, especially if they're not licensed electricians. So it's very important. This is one of the most critical things about doing this kind of electrical work is your grounding and bonding and doing so incorrectly could cause equipment damage. It could cause a very dangerous situation for uh, people around your equipment or your home. So this is very critical, very important to understand. Let's get into it. So first we're going to go over someone that's got a combination meter load center or a meter main. A meter main is basically just a meter and a main breaker all in one uh, unit while the combo meter also has room for branch circuit breakers. So these are very common throughout the country and so this is going to be a common setup you have. So at your meter main or your combo meter that is where you know you're going to have your line one your line two and your neutral wires coming in from the utility and then that is where your equipment grounding conductor and your neutral bus bar are bonded that's what's called your 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 ground to neutral bond that happens in this combo meter because this meter is the first disconnecting means of the service that's also where your grounding electrode conductor is going to be connected to your ground rods. Um, so you've, you've got everything done here already. Uh, then the output from that, the connection to the grid boss, will have to be four wire, right? That's going to be your neutral, your ground, your L1, and your L2. It's all going to come from the combo meter over to the grid boss. You are not going to bond your ground and neutrals here in the grid boss. You are going to keep those separated and you're going to keep it four wire over to your backup loads panel and you're going to again keep that ground and neutral separated. So this right here is basically the setup that I have at my house. Outside at the meter I actually have my meter and my main service panel separated um, but that doesn't matter because I use that existing four wire feeder coming into my basement to uh, intercept that with the grid boss. Um, to feed my backup loads panel. And so this is kind of the setup I have in my detailed installation series. If you're a DIYer out there, feeling a little bit overwhelmed installing a system like this on your home, I've got two suggestions. One, go ahead and check out our full installation series on the EG4 Grid Boss Flex Boss Combo on the website. I think it's up to about uh, 15 videos or so by now. It's going to give you really detailed step-by-step -step instructions and videos showing you how to do every last step of the process and how to get your system installed in a professional code compliant manner, get you past that final inspection. Second, go to rockybroadsolar.com. We've got our ultimate DIY guide. You can download it for free. And it's just, again, going to give you uh, some more helpful tips and tricks. It's also going to kind of help those that are still trying to determine what equipment is best for their specific scenario and it's going to give you some good links to the right products for your specific scenario let's get back into it now the grid boss comes with a little lug that sort of grounds that neutral and grounding block together to create that equipment to neutral ground bond make sure again that you do not install that in this configuration all right, so here is your next setup. This is where you have a meter uh, and your utility, for example, might be requiring a gigantic fuse disconnect upstream of the grid boss. Uh, again, this isn't required by code, but oftentimes uh, utility may require this depending on what utility you're working under. So 
generally here you've got a meter and then your your main service panel is what you're going to now turn into your backup panel and previously you had three wire between the meter and your main service panel and that is where your grounds and neutrals were bonded and that is where your grounding electrode conductor came to connect to your ground rods well we're gonna have to modify all of that now because again your grounds and neutrals are bonded at your first service disconnecting means and at that point only. So in this case, your new fuse disconnect, those fuses are over current protection, that's your new disconnecting means. That is where your ground and neutral bond is going to be connected. That is where you're gonna run your grounding electrode conductor from. And then you are going to run four wire from that point forward keeping your grounds and neutrals separated all the way through. In this case, you do not need that main breaker in the grid boss because those fuses are going to be protecting your service at its ampacity. Luckily, my utility does not require this gigantic fuse disconnect. Those things can add quite a bit of cost to your system. Uh, they just require a PV system disconnect that can disconnect the PV inverter from the grid boss. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, press that notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description below. Let's get back into it. Next is kind of where you had a meter and a main service panel, and now you're just coming in and installing the grid boss um, to, to, to separate the two. Um, so now again, your main service panel is no longer your main service panel. That is now a sub panel. So you're going to have to replace that three wire. Uh, you could still, you're, you're still going to be running three wire from your meter to the grid boss, but that is now your new service disconnecting means. That is where you're going to bond your grounds and neutrals. And then you are going to run four wire from your grid boss to your backup loads panel and you're going to keep your grounds and neutrals separated. Now make sure in this configuration you install that Eaton CSR breaker. You size it on the rating of your electrical service uh, because that is what makes that grid boss service entrance rated. I've got a great video on how to do that on my detailed EG4 Flexboss Grid Boss installation series. If you're planning on buying some of this equipment for your home, go ahead and check out our discount codes and affiliate links down in the description below where you might be able to save yourself a little bit of money on your installation. So you're gonna, again, you're gonna remove that grounding electrode conductor from your sub panel. You're instead gonna have it in your grid boss and that is what's gonna run from the grid boss to your ground rods. Now don't forget, this is where you do want to bond your grounds and neutrals inside of that grid boss uh, using that optional accessory that comes with the grid boss, that little neutral to ground bonding jumper. Well, everyone, I hope you got value out of today's content. As always, I really appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Till next time, take care.